My name's uh, Jim Dustin. I'm a professor here at Dalhousie University. I specialize working on striped bass and, and salmonid fish. I've been working on the Shubanakiti for about 20 years, uh, and it, it was striped bass that attracted me to, to that river. And it's, it's just been a joy to try and uh, understand and, and measure and, and, and gain an understanding of the of the dynamic nature of, of, this, uh, of this large and powerful estuary. The definition of an estuary is, a, is a where, where the salt water and fresh water mix. And uh, so an estuary naturally has large variations in salinity with the tide. And uh, so with the, with the Shubanakiti estuary, those, the tidal and salinity changes are tremendous uh, due to the large tides. Some species of fish are capable of uh, surviving and thriving in a wide range of salinities. Uh, so estuarine fish in particular can uh, uh, thrive in, in, in estuaries. They, they are specially adapted to tolerate wide ranges in salinity and, and temperature. Striped bass are the, is a key species in our monitoring program. Uh, the eggs hatch within two days and thereafter the, the larvae, which are no more than five millimeters long, are, are suspended in the water column and they move back and forth within the tidal currents. And so there's, there's no other species quite like that uh, in, in the estuary. As we work with the tides, so we're always uh, seeing when the tidal bore will arrive and we sample throughout the tidal cycle. So some days we, we sample on the flood tide and some days we, we sample through the ebb tide. The ebb tide lasts about 10 hours. The flood tide is a huge rush over about 90 minutes. It's very exciting with the, with the high water currents. And we use small mesh nets to, to take samples uh, every, every hour or every as, as often as every 15 minutes. And what we're specifically interested in, in May and June are striped bass eggs and the, the, the very small larval stages, which are actually invisible in the muddy water. Uh, but we catch them in, in our fine mesh nets and we count them and we measure their body size and see what they're eating. And but through that, we gain a strong and thorough understanding of their, sort of their ecology and feeding behavior. Over the last nine years, we've discovered that the two real important factors uh, dictating survival uh, of the larvae is temperature and salinity during June. And the, the warmer it is, the better, and the saltier it is, the better. So now what was special about 1999 was that it was one of the warmest and driest Junes over the last hundred years. And that enabled the few striped bass larvae that were there at that time, a high proportion of them survived. And they have now grown up to be the large adults that we see today. And many anglers have, have, have tremendous sport uh, fishing for them. We can correlate salinity and temperature and time of year with actual numbers of animals and numbers of fish. Not just striped bass, we also measure the gaspero. Anything we catch in our nets, actually, we, we count and measure. Uh, so we're building up uh, a knowledge of the ecosystem. If we want to gain an under, a, a true understanding of any animal, really, we, there's two things we do. We, we observe the animals in the wild, but there's a lot of factors changing at the same time in their natural ecosystem. So to, to try and unravel that puzzle, we, we bring animals into the lab, fish into the lab, and then we can, we can rear them under very controlled conditions. We can control the salinity. We can control the temperature and we can quantify, we can measure the response, the growth, the survival of the fish under, under controlled conditions. So when we put the lab experiments together with the uh, field work, we get a thorough understanding of, of the biology and the ecology of, 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 the, of the animal. 
The purpose of these, uh, these series of jars here called McDonald jars is, uh, is, is to determine the salinity tolerance uh, of striped bass uh, of, of various stages of development from eggs to the juvenile. Our, at the test that we're conducting now, we have juvenile fish. These fish are about uh, four centimeters long. Uh, and we've, we've conducted about five tests now to determine the salinity tolerance. And what we found uh, has really just confirmed what we've seen in the estuary. The, the, the striped bass, the young striped bass are highly tolerant to a wide range of salinities. Yeah, what we have here is a demonstration of the tolerance of striped bass to, uh, to high salinity. We're going to be videotaping their activity for a full 96 hours to demonstrate they have a, you know, a long-term tolerance uh, and they can thrive in, 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 these, in these high salinities, such as 28 PPT that we have here. And uh, 96 hours is sort of a, a very standard duration of time that is used all around the world to sort of test or demonstrate tolerance of animals to, to particular, under particular environmental conditions. I think the most exciting uh, finding really was the, was the large differences in survival and numbers of fish from year to year. There are good years and bad years. And, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the weather in June in the post-spawning period is critical. Nova Scotia is notorious for uh, terrible weather sometimes in June. It can be snowing. It can have, we can have a cold front come through with some very cold rain. That, that for example, happened in 2015 uh, after a, a strong, large spawning at the end of May. Uh, there was a tremendous... Uh, spell of cold weather in early June. Following that, we found there was hardly any striped bass, young striped bass in, in the estuary. By contrast, 2015 was a very good year for tomcod. Uh, and I think the reason for that was that they lay their eggs in winter. And we, as we all remember, the winter of 2014 was the coldest on record. But that was good. The eggs, were, the eggs of the tomcod were safely under the ice and they were protected. So each year is different for each species depending on the environmental conditions. Healthy rivers are, are a sign of a healthy society and, and we all want, all Nova Scotians want all our rivers to be well managed. We can only achieve that by studying them and, and, uh, and understanding the, the complexities of, of Mother Nature.